The bad guy has to process events too, and if you can get inside his decision loop, you can smoke him. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa, and this week we continue on in crazy videos out of Brazil. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of Newbold targets. Newbold targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Unfortunately, the raw video on this one's kind of choppy, guys. This isn't me doing it. It's just, it's not YouTube having a problem. It's the original video. We're going to see the first motorcyclist come up. He is our intended victim riding his bike. And you're going to see the second is two guys on a moto that are going to come up and they are going to flash a gun at him, point a gun at him, and he, on the other hand, is armed as well. Gets his gun out very, very quickly and gets shots going towards these guys. Notice that they are running off as fast as they can, and at least the gunman here is going to hobble off down the road. He has been shot at least once or hurt in some capacity when uh, their bike went down or whatever. So now what you're going to get to see here is our good guys actually going to run their way as well and put some more shots in their direction. Again, I'm sorry for the choppiness guys that's in the original and I could not find an original anywhere that didn't have that bunch of choppiness though I looked and looked and looked but it doesn't look like he's hurt to me he takes a bunch of follow-up shots keeps after him heads off screen there it looks like the bad guys lost this one good guy won it and that's where this one ends Got him good on that one I got a question for our watchers out of this one I'm gonna have to answer it in the comments about those who ride motorcycles. If you ride a motorcycle, what do you do with your firearm while you're riding? I rode for a number of years, don't have a bike right now, always kept my firearm right in its regular position in its concealed holster when I rode. Interested in what's going on out there in the world right now. Let's get to some lessons out of this one. So we talk about your car being a valuable thing, motorcycles as well, and depending on the part of the world that you're in, you can get jacked for your moto really fast as well because these moto jackers come up quickly as a twosome, both know how to ride, and they will point a gun at you, take your bike, and off they go. So let's think about what our good guy is doing here because our bad guys show up two on a moto. Now, in some parts of the world, you know, if you're in Asia or in Africa, two guys on a moto is nothing. Uh, in, in, you know, most of Asia, you get three, four, five, six people on a moto and in Africa as well. In North America, two guys on a moto is a little bit rare. In South America, it is a warning of an impending carjacking. Central and South America and the Caribbean, this is absolutely a warning of an impending robbery. So cultural cues matter, understanding what those look like. And if ever you're vacationing in Central or South America, now you know that. Now then he points a gun at him. Now notice that our good guy here is choosing to go for his gun. Now I normally say, don't draw from the drop. Guy's got his gun on you and his eyes on you. That's a great way to die. Now that said, if you are very fast with your draw to first shot, you can be so fast because they're not expecting resistance that you might be able to gun, get your gun out in time and get it on them. Notice that our bad guy here sees the gun and starts responding to it, not by shooting, but by moving. And sometimes that happens as well. We see that on camera on a fairly regular basis. Now that said, I would really recommend purposeful compliance instead. Put the bike down, start getting away from it. You look for an opportunity for a counter ambush but if you're very fast and you have your gun in your regular position this guy on his motorcycle had the gun in his regular position so he's able to get his gun out quickly now notice as well he lets the bike drop very smart don't worry about the bike in that moment your life is at risk next thing I want you to notice is is that as the shooting starts these distances open up very very quickly their first shot was probably at three or four yards but notice here yes we still have a deadly threat guy has just been you know pointing a gun at us and the distance has opened up to my estimation about 12 to 15 yards yards here. So we went from a three, four yard shooting position. So some people hear, oh, the average gunfight is three shots at three yards in three seconds, which is not in any statistics that I've ever seen that can be backed up in any kind of averages. And notice that the shooting is still going on here at about 15 yards. So knowing how to get past that three to seven yard shot, very, very important. Now the bad guy is hurt. He is hit here, but he is not incapacitated, which is one of the big reasons that we always say you don't just want to shoot at the bad guy. You want to put bullets in anatomically significant places because that ends the threat more quickly quickly. So this guy's hit in the leg, or I don't even know if he maybe hurt his leg, falling down or whatever, but, but just sending bullets down range. I do see it work effectively, but you're going to be responsible for where those bullets land. So you want them to land in the bad guy and you want them to land in anatomically significant places so that the threat ends more quickly. That's what your goal is with your defensive handgun is to end the threat very, very quickly. Now then our good guy is going to start taking follow-up actions. I would strongly recommend rather than running towards the bad guy here that you run away. Now he is going to kind of stop it 
up here and I get that and that's really good, but chasing these bad guys down is something that I don't recommend even for off-duty cops anywhere. You don't have to enforce laws when you're not on duty. So don't chase bad guys. Get, get the heck out of there, scoot. Get on the phone with 911, get to a safe place or you know whatever 911 is in your country. Get to a safe place and let the, the professionals outsource the rest of your violence, okay? So this good guy, he was carrying his firearm in a proper position while he was on his motorcycle. He was very fast to his first shot. Didn't worry about his motorcycle, got the shots on target. Let's be careful chasing bad guys as we cover our ASP.